Yeah. But one person who come to mind, another one that, we, you know, he was open about it. He, I'd love to know you being a fellow comedian. What was your thoughts on Richard Pryor? During the Richard day? Pryor to this day is, for me, the number one monologuist I've ever heard. One of the most brilliant. To me, the most brilliant really? comedian I've ever heard is Richard Pryor. Now, next to that is Dave and the rest of all of that. Uh, by the way, Lunell. I'll tell you about Lunell, you know. Um, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Richard was deep into it as I was. And I'm going to blame the cocaine for what he did when he first came to Saturday Night Live. He came and uh, he brought his own people with him. And he made it clear he didn't want to use me or anything. He wanted to bring his own people, which he did. So if you notice that show that he's on, I don't do anything with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, that hurt me because then and now, no matter what happened then, to this day, he is my number one greatest monologue I've ever heard. Because anytime he came to New York, I was there. Meet the forum or scotting or wherever he came, I was there. Later on, he did a movie called Critical Condition. And I got a, yeah, yep, I got I a call the from the director, Michael Aptek, saying that Richard wanted me to be in the film. So he never said to me, hey man, you know, so I treat you well. He never said that. He just had me in the film, which, you know, we became friends then. And, uh, you know, uh, a couple of times I went to his house over on, oh, I've got the name of the street, but it's over, uh, it's, it's it in Bel Air. It's in Bel Air, you know, his house. But, in Bel -Air. but uh, that's when we became friends. And so I assumed that was okay, his way. So, <laughs> saying, hey. Did, did you ever get a chance to, and I asked this, like, and I almost feel bad asking it. Did, did you and Richard ever get high together? No, 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 no. But by that really? time, I was working hard to uh, not. Yeah, I still hadn't succeeded, but I was really working hard to get off. So no. You know, it's interesting that you classify him as the greatest monologuist that you have ever seen. Uh, you know, for for me, I look at once upon a time. I looked at Eddie Murphy as it, it, this was the all time great. He was on the top of Mount Rushmore, but I got to give it to yeah. Dave Chappelle now, you know, for a minute, Chris Rock came yeah, in oh, and did his thing. So it's so interesting that you have lived to see all of these great comedians. I mean, we, we talk about Richard, but right there with him was yeah. Red Fox. Um, Let me say he that. was killing it. I was weaned. Oh, go ahead on Red Fox, okay? So when I talk about uh, Richard, I have to say, Red Fox, Mom, maybe I grew up on them, and they're in a special category, particularly Red Fox, um, who had, I don't know if I can do it like him. As a kid, I was on the floor with this um, thing that he and Slappy White came up with, of the detergent, the detergent, was called FUG, F-U-G-G. -G. They told all the ladies, you know, housewives, if you got a dirty floor, we have a detergent that you will use called FUG it. So if you got dirt on the floor, just FUG it. But we also have a complimentary detergent called SUG, S-U-G-G. -G. So if you run out of FUG, use SUG. So if you can't FUG it, SUG it. I, as a kid, I understood what that meant. I was on the Lord, so if you can't fuck it, suck it. <laughs> I put a Richard uh, Pryor joke that I still remember to this day. He was talking about, he said, this woman 
was so fine. And he said, I'm sorry, ladies, but you're going to hear next. He said, this woman was so fine, I wanted to suck, suck her daddy's dick. <laughs> but anyway, I agree with you about Eddie, Dave Chappelle, who, in my opinion, is doing it like a motherfucker. Um, Chris Rock, definitely. Those guys, in my opinion, correctly deserve to turn comedian. I think, the reason why I always reject it because I see it as a very special gift. Now, I had a club, a comedy club for 11 years, where I learned from those comedians who came to my club more that has added to my ability to deliver as a comedian. But at no time, and even now, that I consider myself in their class. I'm not. I'm an actor who is in a very funny show, and I have learned to be funny from that, right? Those guys were born with a native gift to make people laugh. So that's why I, that's why I say when I say about me and I mean, I'm not like them. You know, that that's so humble of yourself and it's so self-aware at the same time because you have this amazing career. Um, you're, you're on a career-defining show and you don't look at yourself in the same league just in terms of raw comedic skills that they, yes, natural comedic yes. skills, as, as, as some of these greats. So humble yourself to say that and, and I understand exactly where you're coming from. Beautiful, beautiful. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.